Somebody who lives relatively near where I do just sent me a um, Facebook message and asked me if I heard of this camp called Camp Kesem or something, K-E-S-E-M. And I wasn't expecting it to bring tears to my eyes. They basically offer camp. It's actually, it might even be the first, no, it's not the first tears I've cried from having being from being diagnosed with cancer I think the first time I cried was the well was the when I got the information when I got the phone call but I'm not sure I cried since then um about it I mostly have just felt really joyful and grateful and um grounded in a lot of ways but I haven't really been the last few days I haven't been feeling great for different reasons but um, I was looking at the camp information and they offer free camp for children age I think 8 to 16 who have either lost a parent to cancer whose parent is undergoing treatments for cancer uh, or the parent is a survivor of cancer and I just um, it just really struck me because it's such a it's such a strange world to live in when you're in the early stages of cancer, being in the early stages of cancer because there's not a lot that is evident that I have cancer. My breast looks different um, and the skin is changing even a little bit more near the nipple where there seems to be the tumor is either located or has spread, you know, just that area is discolored and um and then besides that I mean I have some some inflammation in my armpit and that literally just feels like uh just getting distracted that literally just feels like I did a lot of push-ups which I also do a lot of push-ups so sometimes it's hard to tell uh if it's an inflamed lymph node or just swelling from exercise. So anyway, coming across that, um, the information about the camp, I was just like, wow. A friend of my daughter's at school made a comment one time about, to my daughter saying, you shouldn't have to go through this. It's not fair. Something like, it's not fair that you have to go through this. Like no kid should have to go through it. And I thought, like, what is she going through? You know, she's not really going through anything yet that I that I can tell. I mean, it's... Um, she listens in um, when I'm having conversations with people, and I've been very open with her, and I've also shared directly with her. I mean, she knows exactly what's coming down the road, and she knows about my appointments. I mean, I make them... I, I, I share with my daughter about my life and about my choices for the most part um but you know the word cancer is a word that an adult has an association with you know like adults know somebody that died of cancer or know somebody who knows somebody that died of cancer or know somebody who who battled and won with cancer I mean that it's like that's an adult frame of reference kids don't kids don't most kids don't know that I mean maybe they have someone in their school or something like that but for the most part my daughter doesn't know anybody who's been through that who's been through cancer so cancer is like another word right I mean she doesn't really <laughs> she doesn't really have a frame of reference for it so yeah anyway it just brought tears to my eyes and I thought wow it's so beautiful they offer it for free it's a free week-long camp for kids a age 8 to 16 um, and they do all kinds of you know it's just like summer camp basically and I, I I can't really imagine her going to it for one because she um, she would want to have a friend and I don't know that she has another friend whose parent is dealing with cancer like she is because that's who gets to go it's not just open to anybody um, but I'm going to bring it up to her and ask her about it but it just raises for me um the reality that there's not um there isn't a lot of evidence about for having cancer 
um, when you're in the early stages, you know, unless you, like in the later stages, someone might have a hard time taking care of themselves. And at this point, I don't have a hard time taking care of myself. I can do all the same things I have was able to do six months ago, a year ago. Nothing's changed in that regard. Um, the only thing that's changed is the severe tiredness that I have. And I'll be getting another round of Herceptin tomorrow, even though I'll be starting the TCHP res regimen um, two weeks from today, actually. Uh, we I booked an Airbnb for us um, to go down and spend the night twice. We're going to have to spend two nights there because um, we'll go down on Monday. I'm getting the port placed on Monday, and then we'll spend the night, and then Tuesday... It's five hours to get the TCHP, the first dose of chemo, um, and then they give you a, I think it's a shot after that, and I think it's called new, new Lasta, I can't remember, something like that, and I'm pretty sure that is to help with the, the after effects of the chemo, so with the nausea, the vomiting, and all those things, it, I, I think that you're supposed to do that the day after, so basically it's requiring that we be down in the bay for um, two days, two nights. But thank God for Airbnb because I found a really great place. I found a place before that was in Hayward, and it was awesome. It was only $50, which is a really good deal for staying in the bay. Um, but it's about an hour drive to Stanford, and I found a place in East Palo Alto. And you have to kind of be careful in East Palo Alto because that's sort of the more depressed part of town which is crazy because it's, you know, within spitting distance of Facebook. Um, but still, so I found a place that looks good, and it's a studio that we can have all to ourselves, so that'll be good. And it's um, not 50 bucks, but it's not too, it's not too expensive. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I'm really... I think this is like now where the rubber meets the road. Um, I ordered a couple of wigs online and I've worn wigs before just for fun. And so it kind of um, reignites that place in myself from going to Burning Man and wearing fun wigs at Burning Man and, and getting to take on another personality basically. So I'm hoping to um, just have fun with it and let the wigs be um, an experience you know, a statement of my own self-expression and playfulness and fun because one of them is like this peach-colored, pe peachish, pinkish bob <laughs> um, with like, with roots, so it looks really playful. And then the other ones are, um, I got two other ones. The other ones are like more realistic looking. They don't quite look like my hair, but it doesn't really matter. It's just some hair. So, yeah, it's... I don't know, I guess till now I've really felt um, fortunate in that I haven't had a lot of negative um, side effects from medicine or really felt under the weather in any way. I've, I've felt really healthy and I've just been trying to take as good a care of myself as I can. And now I'm about to surrender to the hardcore stuff, so fingers crossed it goes well and I have all the supplemental things I need to keep my immune system strong because I mean that's really what happens is chemo depresses the Im immune system um, so I just have to do my best with it and see how it goes I, I think the worst treatments I think I'll be getting six I actually don't know because I mentioned in a video prior that my pathology might have changed so it could be changing things, but if it doesn't, I think I'll be getting six rounds of chemo, so that's 18 weeks. Um, I actually have no idea, because I haven't spoken to the doctor, Dr. Sheth at Stanford, um, but that's like a typical course of treatment, so I hear number three and number six. Well, actually, three and five are really bad. Some women feel like they can't even make it through six, and sometimes, sometimes they don't. I mean, in that they don't they end up not doing the sixth treatment so I'm not expecting to feel too bad after the first and second one um, I'm more expecting a little bit later down the road to feel like I got hit by a bus but um, <laughs> who knows maybe I won't maybe I'll be one of the lucky ones but I kind of like to have low expectations so that I don't get my my hopes dashed if 
if it affects me and impacts me really, really intensely, then um, at least I will have been expecting that. So, all right, I'm off to Pilates now. Thanks for listening.